It is hard to imagine another era in American politics that's been packed with as much drama as what we've seen in the last month. Here to help us unpack it all is Democratic Congressman Scott Peters from the 50th District. Welcome, Congressman. Thanks for having me. Good that you're here. In the last month, we've witnessed President Biden bomb. At the first presidential debate, we saw an assassination attempt against former president and current GOP presidential nominee, Donald Trump. We've seen uh, President Biden drop out of the presidential race and endorse his vice president, Kamala Harris. How dizzy are you? How are you processing all of this? It happened all you know within about a week, and it's um, it's amazing. But I'm very excited about where we've ended up and, and about the fight ahead. Vice President has raised two hundred million dollars in the last week. Sixty-six percent of that money has come from first-time donors. She's gained a hundred and seventy thousand volunteers. She's a former prosecutor facing a convicted felon in this race. What about her is resonating with voters? Well, I think she's strong. She's um, she's she she's energetic, and I think she gives off a good feeling that she can lead us into the future. Uh, that was our problem with um, President Biden, who I think has done a wonderful job, one of the best people I've ever met in politics. But it didn't look like he was going to be able able to carry on a campaign effectively while he was being president, and we were headed toward a big loss. So I think what what everyone feels is a sense of rejuvenation that we've got a shot at this. We can beat Donald Trump. We can put a, a good Democrat in the in the in the in the presidency who reflects our values and who can lead the country forward into the future. There have been a lot of racist, a lot of misogynistic attacks against the vice president. They haven't quite landed yet. Do you expect them to? No, I don't think people have uh, patience with that. And I, um, I think people are evaluating these two people as whether they can be leaders of the country and leaders of the free world. Uh, she has a wonderful background um, in government as a prosecutor. I think she's going to be good on uh, security. Uh, she's going to be good on opportunity. She's going to be good on freedom. And that's where we'll win this race. I want to pivot to Project 2025, assembled by former Trump administration officials mm -hmm. and the Heritage Foundation, a conservative think tank. It lays out a plan to shutter federal agencies, including the Department of Education. Mm -hmm. It also advocates using a biblically based definition of marriage and family. Here is what former President Trump has to say about the plan. And they come up with this, pro I don't know what the hell it is, it's Project 25. He's involved in Project, and then they read some of the things, and they are extreme. I mean, they're seriously extreme. But I don't know anything about it. I don't want to know anything about it. Do you believe him? No, I don't believe him. I think, well, first of all, uh, whether he, he's um, ignorant is, that's, that's his claim, though we get the President of the United States running on the, the notion that he's ignorant of this. Uh, this was drafted by his, the, the, his own Director of Office of Management and Budget, uh, and it reflects the, the wildly conservative extremist views of his base, including, you didn't mention, more tax cuts for wealthy people at a time when the federal de debt has never been bigger, uh, and allowing money from the government be, to be distributed by political appointees rather than by civil, serv civil servants who are trying to look at the problem and not who voted for Donald Trump. So we're in for a tough ride if we, if we, we see another Trump administration with Project 2025. Uh, and I think as people come to know what that's all about, uh, they're going to be really shocked by it and I think eager to vote for, uh, for Vice President Harris. So Vice President Harris has said the following about Project 2025. But Donald Trump wants to take our country backward. He and his extreme Project 2025 agenda will weaken the middle class. Like, we know we got to take this seriously. Can you believe they put that thing in writing? You talked about voters maybe not being so happy about it. What is your understanding about voters' sense of Project 2025 and its effect on their lives? What are they saying to you? I don't know that people understand the, the, the document itself yet, and it'll be our job to explain it. But we did, you know, we did face when, when um, Donald Trump ran against Hillary Clinton, and he said he was going to load up the Supreme Court with people who were overturn, would overturn Roe versus Wade. A lot of people poo-pooed that and said he'll never do that. And fact, that's what he did. And um, he says a lot of stuff that people used to rationalize as things he would just say to get elected. 
But now we know that when he gets in office, he will really try for that, the most extreme thing. Overturning Obamacare, again, is on the table. Uh, health care, the, the health care advances that we made, uh, again, will be on the chopping block again. And people don't want that. They just need to know uh, what, what it's all about over in the Trump camp. Congressman Peters, thank you so much for speaking to us today. Thank you, Mitha.